Hello and welcome to the Futures Lab. So this week we're going to be doing the second part of our Asgore swipes, the actual swipe attacks. And I want to draw my own, but before I do that I wanted to have a look at this GIF in Scratch so that I can see what it looks like. So I'm going to download this now. Okay, let's upload this and see what it looks like. Okay, take a look at the costumes. Well the first few are just Asgore standing in place, I don't really care about those. But, these ones here are interesting. There's actually only maybe three or four frames of animation. We've got first this standing in place, then this primary swipe here, then this faded swipe, and now the weapon has moved to the other side. Then after that we've got the swipe going the other way. But I have a plan for how we're going to conquer that little problem. Okay, I've got a good idea for how I want to draw my own swipe attack now, so I'm going to get rid of this sprite, I don't need it anymore. And let's head to our attack sprite. Let's duplicate this costume, the swipe twinkle costume, and that's just to make sure that we've got the correct shade of blue for the swipe attack that we're making. Then let's rename the costume up here, and we'll call it swipe1. Now as we draw this, let's keep an eye on how it looks in our game. So let's click on the show button here, set the x coordinate to 0 and the y coordinate to 0, so it's in the center of the screen. There we go. And then let's make sure the direction is 90. Now once you've done all that, we should probably make sure that our box is set to the correct costume as well. Let's make sure it's on the evade costume. And now we'll be able to make sure that our art is the right size and shape to fill the entire box. Okay, well to start off with, just make sure that your fill is the same color by using this tool here on your little star. But then once you've got that, we're going to delete the star and we're going to make a really big circle. Once we've done that, I quite like the effect of giving this a two-toned color. So I'm going to click on this particular two-toned option, and then this green, I'm going to turn that into a very pale blue. Okay, so the color of both of these is 50, but I'm going to make this one, the saturation, a lot lower, which should make the bottom look a lot more pale and white. There we are, looking good. Now let's use this tool here to turn this into more of a swipe shape. Now if you select one of these points, you can change it to pointed rather than curved, and that will make this look a lot sharper. And don't be afraid to make this really nice and generously big. Now if you have some little gaps in the box, that's probably fine because even if the heart was hiding in this corner, it's still going to get hit by the swipe. I've just tinkered with the color a little bit and switched it both to 53. I quite like this shade of blue. So once you're done with swipe one, we need to duplicate this. Now once we duplicate this, we'll have swipe one and swipe two. Now we're going to leave swipe two as it is, but we're actually going to go back to swipe one and add in our weapon. Now Asgore used this cool staff trident kind of spear thing, and I'm going to have my scratch cat use a big sword. Now to make sure that your sword is the same color as your swipe, just have this tool selected, click on this, and then when you click away, you'll still have the same color settings and the same shading as well. Now this is how I'm going to make my sword. It's going to look a little bit like Cloud Sword from Final Fantasy VII. I'm going to make a big rectangle like this, and then another rectangle like this. One more rectangle here. Then I'm going to put a circle on the bottom of the hilt like this. Then I'm going to use this tool right here to add in a point right here. And then if I delete this point, we'll get this cool curved edge right here. Now have a bit of a play around with all of these points. Make sure that everything is set up the way that you like. And when you're done, Select this tool here and hold down shift on your keyboard and select all the different shapes that make up whatever your weapon is. Once you've done that, we can click this group button here to make it much easier to move the sword around without the individual parts all coming unstuck from each other. Once that's all done, we're going to rotate this so that the sword will fit nicely here. And as we drag this around, 
just put it so that the bottom of the weapon lines up with that nice central point right here. Now I'm going to need to make this a little bit bigger. Okay, that looks really good. And once you're happy and you've got this all positioned, we can actually delete the swipe. So now we've got this cool image of the sword and then it goes into this cool swipe like this. So next we're going to copy the swipe 2 costume. Now for swipe 3, this is that image of the sort of half faded swipe. So now what I'm going to do is delete some of these points on the left side. Not all of them. Um, and then let's create some new points like this. Now if we change this one into pointed, yeah, that's looking pretty good. Another thing that you can do is you can select the points and drag these little diamond shapes around to change the angles of the curves and make them a little bit more even. And once you're happy with how this looks, let's copy the sword from swipe one. Now make sure you get all of the components and if you need to, you might need to group them again. Once it's selected, you can press control C on your keyboard then control V in swipe three. Now this is the wrong way around. So let's click this flip horizontal right here. And then let's drag this over again so that the bottom of the hilt is over the center point. And for the last costume, we're going to duplicate swipe three. And in swipe four, we can get rid of this shape here, leaving just the sword. So now looking at the whole animation, it looks a bit like this, which is very cool. So feel free to take as much time as you want on your art and when you're done, let's put in the code. So we're going to make a my block for the swipe attacks themselves. Let's click on make a block and we'll call this swipe attacks. And then we need to put in an input for number. Once you're done with that, press OK and drag this swipe attacks somewhere we've got some space underneath it. So we'll also need to put in a swipe attack right here underneath the swipe twinkles. And just like we did here, we need to drag this number input and put it into our swipe attacks. Now let's have a think about what we want to go underneath our defined swipe attacks. First, let's make sure that the size is set to 100%. Then make sure that our attack sprite is in the right place. Let's go to motion, get out a go to X zero, Y zero. Let's make sure it's pointing in the correct direction. We want to point in direction 90. And now we need some code for each individual swipe of the sword. Now remember, we're using our swipe list and our counter variable to keep track of what color we're up to in the list of attacks. So let's make sure that we set our counter variable to zero. Then let's go to control and get out a repeat. And we want to repeat number times. Now, thankfully, we already have a really useful my block that we made last week. So let's get out our set swipe color my block to make sure that the sword is the correct color. Then let's make sure we're on the right costume. We're looking to switch the costume to swipe one, which is the first in our animation. Then let's give the player just a split second chance to see the sword appear. Let's put in a weight 0.15 seconds. You can change this if you want the player to have a bit more of a heads up when the sword first appears. Then we need to cycle through costumes swipe two, swipe three, and swipe four, and we need to check collision with the heart. So let's get out a repeat three, and inside that, let's go next costume, and we'll put in our my block for collision. This is the really handy thing about having things in my blocks. We figured out our collision code, and now we can use it all over the place without having to write it all out again. Now we need to make sure that we can actually see the attack and it's not hidden. So let's put in a show right underneath switch costume and let's put in a hide right after our repeat three. Okay, now that might be enough to test. So let's get out a swipe block and let's test maybe swipe five and see what that looks like. Blue, orange, blue, orange, orange, blue, orange, blue, orange, orange. That's great. 
Now those swipes went past really fast, so I'm going to put in a wait 0.1 seconds right after this hide, just so that after each swipe we've got a bit of time to recover and figure out what we're doing for the next one. Now we've got the problem where the swipes are always coming from the same side, whereas Asgore always changes which side the swipe is coming from. But we've got a nice easy way of fixing that. Go to Motion and look for Set Rotation Style Left Right and put that right here. Then let's get out a turn 180 degrees and put it right underneath our weight. What this should do is take all the attack sprites and flip them left to right and we'll see if that works. Give your swipe 5 a click and we'll see what goes down. Oh that's perfect! Now I know I said last week that I was pretty happy with the way we set up the enemy darken code, but I think I've changed my mind and let me show you. If we have two swipes one after the other, let's see what that looks like in the game. Okay, the first one goes well, we can just about see Scratch, but then watch what happens. Scratch gets even darker and now we can no longer see them. So we should definitely fix this. Head to your enemy sprite and look around for when I receive enemy darken. Let's duplicate that, but then we'll get rid of all of this. We'll pull this bit off here, get rid of all of that. And now if we change this to when I receive new message, enemy lighten. Now we've got these two different broadcasts, ones that make Scratch go dark and one that makes Scratch go light again. Now while we're here, I'm just going to change this repeat 18 into a repeat 9 and this change brightness by 5 into a change brightness by 10, which just means that Scratch will return to normal brightness about twice as fast as they fade slowly to black. That bit's optional though, you can leave it the same if you want. Now let's head back to the attack sprite and let's look for where we've got our broadcast enemy darken. We've got it right here. I'm actually going to take this broadcast and the weight and put it underneath define swipe twinkles. That way every time we enter into that mode where the stars are appearing in Scratch's eyes, we're darkening the sprite before that happens. Which means all we need to do is right underneath define swipe attacks put in a broadcast enemy lighten. There we go, perfect. Now let's test our two swipe attacks on top of each other again. Let's hit stop and click on this. Okay, scratch goes into dark mode there, then back up into light mode, then back into dark mode. Okay, this is working well, excellent. And the last thing that we need to do is put some swipe attacks into our forever if mode equals evade and actually play and make sure that the heart is colliding correctly. Now you can decide how many swipes you want. I think four is a good number. You'll notice that the Undertale game itself with Asgore's attacks, it's usually four, but you can try three or five or more if you like, as long as you think it's fair. Okay, so we've got orange attacks and if I move around, I don't get hit. But if we have any blue attacks and I'm moving around, I do get hit. Okay, it's all working. And if I don't move, the blue attacks shouldn't hurt me. Okay, there's two blue attacks at the end. Yeah, and the blue attacks did not hurt me. Excellent, it's all working. Now there's just two more things we need to do. Inside our define swipe, we need to make sure that we set the power of this attack. So get out a set variable, we want to set our power, and you can decide how much damage these do. I think I quite like the idea of them doing five damage. I've just noticed that we've forgotten our weight as well, so let's make sure that there's a wait, wait input seconds on the end. And then probably just above that, we should make sure that we set our rotation style to all around. Because remember, we set it to left right during our swipe attacks so that we can swap the sword to left and right. But if it's still set to only left and right, then the rotation's going to work pretty badly for our other attacks. So make sure that you've got this in and that won't mess up any attacks that come after your swipe attacks. And now that we are changing the rotation style of our attack sprite, we should probably make sure that when the game starts, we're set in the correct rotation style. So in your attack sprite, Look around for when green flag clicked, set rotation style 
to all around. This is super important because so many of our attacks point in all sorts of different directions. So we need to make sure that we've got the rotation style set correctly. And that's all the time we have this week. Subscribe and ring the bell to see the next episode. Let me know in the comments what you would like me to do next or if you need any help with your project. And aside from that, stay awesome, be cool to each other and take care of yourselves. We'll see you next time, ninjas. Oh,